edition. Welcome to this edition of Decoding Diplomacy with India Rights Network. Uh, my name is uh, Manish Chand. I'm CEO and Editor-in-Chief of India Rights Network and Center for Global India Insights, a think tank and media publishing company focused on international relations. Uh, we are extremely privileged and pleased to have Mr. Roman Babushkin, uh, Deputy Chief of Mission of the Russian Feder Embassy of Russian Federation in India. Uh, Mr. Babushkin is uh, better known as the, the suave television face of the Russian Embassy in India. Uh, you know, uh, any day you'll find him, you know, speaking at multiple platforms, uh, projecting uh, Russian interest uh, in, the, in the country and uh, across the region. Uh, uh, to, today, in this edition, we are going to be talking about, uh, you know, the ramifications of the ongoing Ukraine crisis uh, on uh, India-Russia relationship which has been described variously a uh, time tested all weather privileged and special above all uh, you know but the events of the last uh, few days have appended the world order is it where it has also uh, put uh, you know a lot of partner countries under stress uh, because of the sheer enormity of the scale of the situation. We don't know what we are up against really right now. So, uh, Mr. Babushkin, without much further uh, ado, let me ask you about your uh, assessment of what's on right now, eight days into uh, the, the crisis. Uh, how do you look at And, you know, today we are talking at a time when the, the threat of a nuclear uh, war or a nuclear accident looms large as well. How do you look at the, the current situation? You know? uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Mr. Chand. I, uh, I appreciate your interest and I'm very grateful for, for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to be with you. So we are, we are friends. So that's why we will have some, not just an interview, but in a friendly dialogue and discussion. So uh, that makes me and I'm sure the you know, audience very comfortable with that. So uh, let me share uh, with you very candidly. So uh, first of all, let me start with the, uh, you know, a very important thing that, you know, what's, what's going on uh, around all this situation, eight years and before and much before that we are in the atmosphere of the global fake news right now. Uh, the President Putin described the uh, current situation as the exposure of the uh, uh, empire of lies. And uh, actually, uh, he was referring uh, to the uh, American politicians who uh, was, were using this term uh, when describing uh, their own domestic politics. And now, actually, they are expanded this empire of lies all over the world. And uh, now we can see that all the Western media are overwhelmed with the fake news and uh, without any attempt to uh, really have a balanced and objective situation. So in this regard, uh, of course, we would invite you and other colleagues in India who would like to have a more balanced picture to uh, not to rely on that fake news and pay more attention to the official positions which are uh, clearly and uh, um, you know, very professionally presented by the uh, relevant officials, including the Russian president, including foreign minister, including our foreign defense minister sources. Uh, let us be very clear that uh, uh, the, uh, Russia is not waging war against Ukraine and its people. We are conducting a special military operation against nationalist forces who uh, for many years already uh, eight years to be precise, had their hands free to uh, conduct a genocide and mass killings against the millions of the Russian-speaking population in the Donbas region. So, and this special military operation is um, uh, aimed to end this war. Uh, throughout all these years, uh, when uh, especially um, um, West supported the anti-constitutional anti coup, uh, in uh, Ukraine and brought to power those people who are openly supporting uh, nationalist forces and neo-Nazists, because um, uh, um, this particular aspect, neo-Nazism, is a very efficient tool to, uh, you know, uh, to you know, manipulate the people against Russia. Uh, 
So this is uh, something which was very typical for all these years. And uh, uh, the West turned a, a blind eye on what is going on in Ukraine. And they reported just what is going on in, uh, on that side of the border, but never went to another side and never reported about what's going on there. However, uh, actually, there were, you know, uh, mass crimes, shelling and uh, killing people of Donetsk and Lugansk republics who ultimately applied for the Russian assistance to provide the shelter, to provide the security and to recognize their independence. Russia uh, has, ma has, you know, made, made this decision according to the uh, international law, according to the 51st article of the United Nations Charter according to the agreements uh, with these two republics and uh, ratified by the Russian parliament. Uh, the Russian forces conducting this military operation are not targeting civilians. They are not uh, using uh, people as a human shield, as uh, the nationalists do. They are using tactics which were very typical, and we know it very well, as terrorists in Syria and other places. And uh, we do not use uh, prohib uh, prohibited weapons, unlike them, again. So, and uh, the uh, um, uh, ultimate goal is to achieve demilitarization and denazification of uh, Ukraine, uh, which should, uh, uh, should not represent any threat to, to Russia and uh, other countries to achieve its neutral status. So uh, this is not an exceeding uh, demand from us. This is something which uh, is really uh, you know, very important for the national security of Russia. In fact, uh, all these years uh, when the West was uh, supporting this uh, Kiev regime, uh, uh, there were uh, targeted military operations of NATO closing, uh, cl uh, coming closer to the Russian border, pumping Ukraine with the tons of thousands of tons of uh, military equipment and uh, um, weapons. So now, using all these weapons, uh, they uh, before this operation started, uh, the um, 120,000 uh, nationalists and uh, Ukrainian army were gathering uh, around these two republics. And uh, the very next day, they were preparing to erase this uh, area from, from the earth and killing everyone. So that's why the Russian military operation was life-saving for millions of of people, and uh, that, that's where we are. This, is, uh, this operation is, con is being conducted very carefully. The Russian army is using only high, high precise weapons uh, in order to target only, only military infrastructure of uh, um, uh, Ukrainian army and nationalist uh, forces. Uh, what is important, uh, so you raised the issue about the nuclear weapon, of course, Russia is a responsible power. We, we do not intend to use a military weapon, uh, a nuclear weapon, uh, according to, to uh, the Russian military doctrine, for example. It was not Russia which first was speaking about uh, the, the nuclear weapons. So, well, uh, let's see, it was preceded by the statements by NATO chief Stoltenberg, by uh, British prime minister, by uh, Ukraine itself, which uh, during the Munich conference demanded uh, that actually they are ready to, to get back their nuclear status. Uh, uh, so, well, uh, which is uh, clearly beyond all the possible logic and, you know, um, uh, understanding of, of the international relations and uh, its complexity. So as far as um, uh, fake news is concerned, so, well, about, you know, well, related uh, thing is, well, uh, uh, there are reports about uh, that Russia targeted uh, one of the nuclear stations, nuclear power plants in Ukraine. So, well, but... Uh, the story was, uh, uh, let me just briefly explain that actually um, uh, the um, explosion, explosion happened in the, um, the building of the uh, training center, which was, you know, uh, occupied by, by the Ukrainian forces and they were shelling, uh, you know, targeting the, the Russian troops uh, from that building. And actually when they were trying to, to leave the area, when they faced the respond, uh, res respond fire from the Russian side, so well, they have blown up this building and they presented it like Russia attacked the nuclear power plant. In fact, uh, so well, we are very careful and very mindful about the safety and security of nuclear plants in, um, in Ukraine, including the Chernobyl one and the second one, the Parushka nuclear power plant. And uh, in fact, I will tell you even more than in coordination with the Ukrainian forces, we are ensuring 
complete safety of these plants and no one is taken as hostages and uh, um, uh, these plants are functioning normally. It is uh, confirmed by the International Atomic Energy Agency. But what happens right now is that uh, along with that, so well, the best is, you know, uh, in spite, uh, despite, uh, instead of, uh, you know, trying to, to, to find a solution of the situation, like actually responding to the Russian demands uh, on the uh, security guarantees, uh, on uh, how to influence Ukrainian authorities who are, uh, you know, uh, have heard about that they have distributed uh, weapons to everyone in Kyiv, even criminals. They left criminals from prisons and distributed weapons among them. So mm -hmm. there is a situation of a chaos that they're creating int intentionally. And uh, not, let's not forget that there is a in a foreign legion, which is you know well being also uh, you know established in Ukraine in order to fight uh, in, uh, uh, along with those nationalists, which are sharing Nazi All forces. Right. And now, now they are you know well pretending to become a, in a European Union, so and uh, claiming that they have the same values. But I'm not sure not sure that if the uh, European Union has the same values as this Nazi regime. And right now we are, are along with that we are conducting negotiations with the Ukrainian authorities. The second round took place yesterday. There are a couple of points in the agenda. So, well, we are at least listening to each other. This is a very good thing. So, well, one of the points is, you know, humanitarian corridors, which we should uh, jointly, uh, you, know, infor, uh, you know, ensure for the civilians to leave the places of where the fire is going on. So I'm very much committed to support these endeavors, especially when it comes to the uh, Indian students. We are maintaining constant cooperation and coordination between the two sides and the leaders level, Minister of Defense level, level of national security advisors and the Minister of External Affairs. All right, uh, all right uh, Mr. Babushkin, sorry to interrupt you, uh, but what you are telling us is something very important. You are saying that this whole idea of nuclear threat of Russia sparking a nuclear conflict, as it were, a conflagration, is uh, uh, is part of the propaganda war. That it, the exactly. threat is being magnified and used as a weapon against Russia to portray uh, Russia as a kind of rogue nuclear state, which is not grounded in reality at all. As you say, Russia is a responsible nuclear state. So we are on a very dangerous terrain where fake uh, reports are acquiring a life of their own, right? Now, going from there, you know, uh, we come to something which is uh, closer. You know, I mean, you said that uh, the two key strategic objectives of this special operation in Ukraine, as spelled out by President Putin, are demilitarization and denazification, right? Uh, just very briefly, uh, by launching this operation, uh, you think Russia is close to achieving these objectives? Number That's one and two, you know. One of the unstated things is to roll back uh, NATO's eastward expansion. Do you think Russia would be achieving these objectives through this operation? Do you see something on the ground which tells you that you are succeeding? Uh, as far as uh, the targets, uh, the goals of the Russian special military operations, we are absolutely confident that this is uh, something we, uh, uh, we will achieve. We have no doubts about that. And uh, as far as uh, the uh, NATO expansion is concerned, uh, basically speaking, if uh, we take the issue of the European security seriously, there is no other way in order to stop uh, aggressive NATO military activities, because what they are doing, they are not only just moving troops closer to the Russian border, they are deploying nuclear weapons in non-nuclear states, which is a you know, uh, you know, very serious violation of the international law. That is something which we could withstand, actually. Uh, NATO EU is using Ukraine as a pretext and as a tool to pressurize Russia. So, well, even if Russia does not represent any threat to NATO, in fact, actually, the just an existence of Russia is, you know, uh, you know, something which doesn't, you know, uh, allow them to live peacefully because actually uh, it, it doesn't allow uh, them to dominate the world. Right. Uh, okay. So now, you know, uh, of course, uh, the situation is still unfolding. A uh, lot of developments uh, that are happening by the minute, by the hour. Uh, you know, in India, uh, we are more, uh, we are kind of focused on uh, what this would mean for India-Russia relations, you know, because this has been uh, indeed a time-tested relationship. In India, we regard Russia as very pivotal to our core strategic and uh, interests and developmental aspirations, right? So, uh, to be more specific, you know, only three months ago, uh, President Putin was in Delhi. 
for annual summit with Prime Minister Modi and more than two dozen agreements were signed. And there was a lot of focus on upscaling economic partnership, which has not kept pace with the military to military relations and defense relations. Now, in the wake of this, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine crisis and sanctions imposed by the West, uh, how do you look at, you know, you think uh, India and Russia could uh, continue with the trade and investment, the economic relationship as before? Uh, this is a very important uh, uh, topic because actually uh, this is something which is in mind of every one of us and about the future of our relations. So, but uh, in just responding shortly, uh, very in a short term, so to you, to very confident about uh, the future of our ties. So, uh, but importantly, you mentioned the visit of the Russian president here to Delhi. It was his, you know, first bilateral visit during the pandemic that you know um, uh, gives you the you know, well, understanding and how important these relations are because, you know, ultimately what we have uh, at, the, at the end, so that our relations of special and privileged strategic partnership have been elevated to another level. So well, by introducing the two plus two dialogue between uh, the foreign and defense ministers, so well, that, that, that means that uh, we are very much committed to continue the and expanding our coordination on uh, the issues uh, of uh, um, global and regional agenda. And in fact, we are both con concerned about the growing instability globally. So when uh, there are some uh, uh, aggressive behavior is taking place in many parts of the world, including uh, uh, the Indian and Pacific Oceans, including uh, European theater, as we know, so, and uh, uh, that was something which, you know, uh, uh, demonstrated how we are confident uh, uh, regarding the, uh, the importance of the Russian Indian partnership, which has become the uh, factor of the global and regional stability. We are very committed to pr uh, pr proceed this way. And uh, certainly uh, it was dedicated to the bilateral agenda, which uh, has made a you know, quite an important impetus to all the directions of our partnerships. It's not you're quite right. So we speak not only on defense, on nuclear power, on space, and uh, you know, uh, uh, cooperation against COVID-19, which is unparalleled. In fact, so well, no one else can, you know, well, uh, replace Russia here. So it's not just because actually we are so uh, greedy, but uh, so this is uh, something which we inherited from years before, and uh, we are very much committed to, to go ahead with this uh, uh, extraordinary level of uh, partnership. Certainly, um, we had a lot of things uh, in mind when it comes to inter-regional cooperation about the uh, Indian growing presence in the Russian Far East, of, in the Arctic, in uh, our connectivities uh, both ways, in the uh, uh, North-South corridor, in Vladivostok, Chennai. So all these plans are there. So well, and uh, growing uh, level of energy cooperation, not only in terms of supplies, ho however, supplies very much on the agenda, long-term supplies, we are, we are moving to the arrangements in this regard. So about the investments in this, uh, in this area, about the uh, uh, petrochemical cooperation, about, you know, uh, many other things are there. So uh, we can, uh, you know, speak a lot about this, you know, uh, areas of partnership, which we know very well. Uh, however, if we come back to the issue of sanctions and how they would influence our operation, this is a, uh, a matter of concern, of course. Uh, so, but uh, we are not afraid. So we are uh, confident that uh, the situation would normalize uh, sooner or later. So we should be patient. We should be uh, calm and professional and uh, uh, understanding of what's going on. There should not be any panic. And uh, sanctions are varying from their, you know, scale, from, from their, you know, uh, uh, coverage, uh, et cetera. So, uh, for example, if a bank is uh, under sanctions, so well, we should look into details in what particular areas. So, well, sometimes actually uh, it doesn't mean that it would interrupt our partnership. So, and uh, we, are, uh, we are ready, we are very much willing and there is a, a tremendous level of goodwill uh, from both sides to continue this partnership and to find ways how we can uh, we can overcome all these difficulties and go ahead together in order to continue what we have planned uh, all together. So, and uh, uh, importantly, both uh, uh, both of us, uh, neither, neither Russia, neither India, do do recognize unilateral sanctions. Sanctions are, uh, you know, uh, a tool of. Um, um, 
unlawful competition. That's, uh, uh, but uh, these days, they are unprecedented. They are touching not only just banking sector economy and some you know, uh, production you know, uh, facilities and uh, some uh, personalities. Well, it covers everything, including air communication, inc including uh, uh, culture, including sports. It is uh, something unprecedented. So, well, this is absolutely illegitimate. We do not recognize that. So, and uh, uh, again, instead of finding a solution, so well, the West is, uh, you know, well, covertly, you know, well, uh, trying to sanction Russia because actually, uh, because of that, they don't need Russia. So, and uh, um, uh, we have no doubt, we have no doubt that the, the sitting together on the same table with India, we will work out um, further mechanisms of how can we go ahead. All right. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so you are quite optimistic that, you know, this is a short term pain, uh, short term disruption, uh, but we eventually will tide over this. Uh, I wonder if you have some specific details to share on the uh, progress of, say, uh, you know, uh, the Chennai Vladivostok uh, corridor, which is uh, one of promises to be a, a, a kind of a game changer or on uh, India's investment in the Far East, you know, concrete indications which suggest that that the India-Russia economic ties are well on course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, when when it comes to the China Vladivostok Maritime Sea Route, it's not the only project we are implementing right now. However, it is being uh, uh, implemented uh, gradually, step by step. Now we have the feasibility study ready in order to you know, proceed further in terms of the practical implementation of this corridor, uh, certainly. So, and then um, uh, when it comes to the far Eastern dimension, uh, we have really broad agenda. So, and then the, we uh, had the very important visits uh, during the recent half year, um, starting with the visit of uh, Hardeep Singh Puri, uh, Honorable Minister of uh, Petroleum and Natural Gas to Vladivostok in uh, September to attend the next uh, round of the Eastern uh, Economic Forum. Then in during October, we have the Indian Minister of Steel visiting Russia. So uh, the uh, talks are going on uh, with regard to the Indian investment cooperation in the Vostok oil cluster, which is a huge uh, oil and natural gas field in the Arctic offshore area in the northern uh, part of Siberia, uh, you know, um, coming to the Arctic area. So and we invite our Indian partners to join uh, the project of the um, Northern Sea Corridor, uh, no, no, Northern Sea Route, which would, another logistic uh, uh, arrangement, which would, uh, you know, um, uh, reduce, considerably reduce uh, costs uh, in transportation from the Pacific to, to the Atlantic, as a lot of projects are there, not only uh, in energy one, but uh, in, in the area of energy, but also in terms of the physical infrastructure, um, uh, creating some port infrastructure, et cetera. So we, we know that there is a, you know, interest from the Indian side expressed in this regard. And uh, uh, again, uh, when it comes to the far Eastern dimension, this is a diamond area, there is a timber area, there are some scientific cooperation since uh, 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 there are, very promising projects are there in the Far Eastern um, uh, University. And based on that, it is a huge scientific center and we, we, um, uh, we, we know that the contacts are going on in terms of uh, you know, how to uh, um, expand our partnership further in this regard. So, but, but it's not limited to, to that as well. So but there are many other areas which are in mind uh, concurrently. So we have to um, uh, look into uh, particular uh, which is concrete things which are happening in terms of sanctions, what particular areas, in what way, and what about the banking mechanisms. Uh, I'm quite sure that uh, we will be having uh, uh, the uh, detailed conversation and disregard between the relevant officials in banking sector, in the uh, en economic sector, in energy sector, in the defense sector, so that we could find ways how we uh, go ahead further. So uh, there would be uh, difficult times, but uh, at the same time, nothing is impossible is nothing for us. So we, we, we are uh, um, not less committed to extend our uh, partnership with India. Right. Uh, Mr. Babushkin, just, uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that bothers now and which is 
triggered a lot of speculation. What happens to S four hundred D? Are this? You think the supplies are on course? Uh, you know, uh, you think uh, this will happen without interruption? Also, very briefly, uh, experts say that India is going to come under greater pressure now from the United States. Uh, uh, that India may also be, uh, you know, uh, subjected to sanctions. In view of all these uncertainties, how do you see this for a deal going forward? Well, um, uh, as per our information, which is available with us, so the deal is uh, going to be implemented timely according to the agreements we have reached. So we, uh, both we are, uh, you know, uh, quite responsibly uh, perceiving this, you know, uh, situation. We know about this uh, pressure. And uh, we must say that we highly appreciate the Indian approach towards solve the situation, very calm and professional, having deep understanding of the genesis of the Ukrainian crisis and the uh, dy dynamics, negative dynamics of the Russian Western relations. And uh, um, uh, we can just highly appreciate the, uh, the ability of India to withstand this uh, pressure. And uh, clearly, the recent, quite recent example of uh, today's night when the court extraordinary summit took place and uh, I mean, we are quite sure that just only because of India uh, uh, the uh, this quadrilateral mechanism remained you know you know uh, focused on in in the Pacific uh, agenda not you know spreading it uh, all over the world of course so that uh, clearly demonstrates that um, you know uh, we can be very much confident in our Indian partners, and we are, you know, very, very proud of them. So, and uh, because not only, uh, not only because uh, um, uh, there is a uh, tremendous goodwill in India with regard to Russia. However, it is well, very, very important factor. But it is also in uh, the Indian national interests. We are quite certain about that. So, because we are sharing the same values of the multipolarity that should be just and equal, just it will be based on the. Uh, commonly universally recognized rules and principles of the international law without any double standards, without any sanctions, without any hidden agenda, blackmail, blackmail and pressure. This is something which we share and which are in, in, critically important for both of us. Otherwise, if we step back uh, again, so, well, uh, that, that, that would mean that actually uh, the attempts uh, to manipulate the world would also cover us more and more. So, well, but we should resist. We are, you know, quite confident in uh, our, you know, uh, stand and in uh, uh, the stand of uh, of India. Right. Uh, also, uh, in the context of sanctions, one small clarification. You know, uh, to avoid uh, to bypass the Western channels of payment. Do you see ruble rupee trade growing in the coming days? Uh, uh, I would say that it would be natural natural to see that our national currency trade uh, uh, would be expanding. Um, we have a good experience in this regard. Gradually, year by year, the vol vol volumes of uh, the payments in national currencies were growing and growing. So we went by the, as per the information as of the 2021, one of the third of our trade was covered by rupee rubles trade. So this is uh, something which is a focus area for both our countries. So because we live in a quite an uncertain scenario when some countries are trying to use these leverages in order to impose its influence. So well, we, since we are uh, uh, in principle uh, not going to uh, allow that to happen, so we will be proceeding further in uh, uh, using our national currencies. Probably you're quite right that we will be having, well, increasingly uh, in, increasing volumes of our uh, rupee ruble trade so it would be probably covering more areas so that would be a good experience although uh, we uh, there are mechanisms which are already existing in this regard so well, we are quite confident that uh, whatever ways we are paying each other so uh, our uh, cooperation would remain at the same and even growing levels uh, right. Uh, uh, one of the things, you know, one of the worry in India is that the Ukraine crisis and because of Western sanctions, uh, the Western sanctions will drive Russia even closer to China. You know, that Russia, Russians and Chinese are becoming bye-bye. 
and Indians or Russians are only those, you know, friends. Uh, jokes apart, I mean, you know, how much you think? You think uh, even though Russia it will get closer to uh, China, but it will not impact uh, the the very unique character of India-Russia friendship. What do you say? I I would say, dear Mr. Chan, that. Uh, diplomacy and international relations is never a black and white picture, right? Which, which the West is trying to, to 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 present. Actually, the West is presenting the events in the world as something is absolutely good and somebody is absolutely bad. It yeah. is it is it is not true. So of course we should see this diversity. We should be we should be flexible in finding the solutions and common ground. So that's why uh, our partnership with India is, uh, you know, uh, guided by the uh, the principle of a unified agenda. Our relations are not targeted against anyone, like the uh, relations uh, of Russia with other countries. The same way, we are not uh, targeting against anyone. Whatever it takes, bilateral relations, either the structures of uh, multilateral nature, like BRICS, like SCO. So these uh, um, these uh, mechanisms are aimed at uh, uh, you know a broadening of the uh, common ground for everyone in order to facilitate cooperation between us so and um, as far as china is concerned of course china is an important partner and but uh, we sh shouldn't uh, uh, compare these two relations because they are very special for example, if we take some areas of cooperation with India that are, that are much more advanced as compared to Chinese ones, including in defense area. So that is something which we can be very proud of. And uh, uh, some other areas, uh, again, so uh, we are uh, not, not comparing that. We are not de developing relations with some countries against any other countries. Of course, right. we are uh, a bit... Uh, you know, um, sharing uh, the same attitude and being very vocal on uh, the what's going um, in the global arena when it comes to the Western policy with China. And so that's why we are able to, to speak in the same voice so uh, openly. Um, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, coming, you know, uh, to, 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 to the uh, closer cooperation with uh, China in some particular areas would somehow undermine the relations of Russia with any other countries. We know the specificity of uh, the problems you have with uh, China, with your border area, and uh, Russia remains uh, uh, the sincere well-wisher of India and sincere well-wisher of, of uh, the, uh, the way the both countries, India and China, could find a makeable solution for the border crisis. We do not interfere, we don't take sides uh, so, but we are ready to provide uh, convenient and acceptable platforms for expanding a dialogue. We'll have a look, uh, BRICS, SCO, etc. So, well, uh, can you remember how much times uh, the Chinese and Indian foreign ministers were meeting? So they were meeting a couple of times at the platform of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So they find this platform as a you know a useful and a very practical in terms of expanding to the partnership and trying to find some ways to, to, to find solutions or at least to make them closer. So, and again, uh, that, that is the same very reason why uh, we started talking about the RIC summit, Russia and the China summit after Vladimir Putin came here in December. That is something which is uh, very efficient and uh, we would really be very supportive of this idea to be materialized. I don't know what, what when it will be happening, but at the same time, we believe that this platform is very promising because uh, it's not only just a discussion talking and uh, about the um, sharing of our approaches on uh, some particular areas, regionally, globally, etc. So well, we are we're also thinking about practical cooperation. When it starts, I think that RIC mechanism would uh, again, would complement to the efforts we are doing already. So, and uh, we are very committed to, to the good relations between the two countries because um, the stability in Eurasia largely depends on how we manage these, you know, relations. And uh, uh, again, again, Russia is would be very supportive of uh, the efforts of both sides to come to some amicable solution. Right. Uh, uh, Mr. Babushkin, also I want to point out, you know, that Russia and India have been great partners in the BRICS format. But some would say that the current Ukraine crisis 
uh, has a, impacted adversely uh, BRICS uh, solidarity and unity. You know, I mean, India, of course, has abstained and China have abstained. Uh, and I guess South Africa have also abstained. Brazil uh, voted in favor of UNGA uh, resolution. Do you see uh, BRICS uh, solidarity suffering uh, because of these developments? The difference is that Russia is not pressurizing our partners, mm -hmm. unlike what the US is doing. We know how big pressure is uh, on India, on Brazil. We can understand why these countries are you know, well, taking the particular approaches and particular positions during the voting. Uh, Ukraine crisis is not an agenda of BRICS. Let's proceed from this point very clearly. And right. uh, there are so much things to, to do in BRICS. Uh, and uh, there are about 70 mechanisms of cooperation, including very much practical cooperation in the areas of uh, in science and technology, energy, then, uh, you know, customs, space, even space, we have uh, uh, we have uh, reached the agreement last year about the space cooperation with the remote satellite arrangements. So, and uh, um, I would not mess these issues. So, whatever positions uh, the countries are taking, it's uh, their own national interest. We we can understand, we can understand the pressure they are facing. We can understand uh, the. Uh, domestic policy compulsions, and uh, sometimes, but uh, uh, we are not losing our confidence in our pra practical relations. Have a look, Brazil. Uh, well, in spite of you know taking this position, so have they have conducted the visit of the Brazilian president to Russia quite recently, just right. just uh, well uh, on the eve of uh, this uh, you know uh, special operation. And in fact, um, uh, the relations between the leaders again so well are characterized and the same with the uh, you know chemistry that, that we are you know uh, can see in the uh, friendship between uh, President Putin and Prime Minister Modi again so and uh, um, but the, the uh, really important point is that BRICS provides us an opportunities for um, a kind of dialogue uh, we all our five countries do not have any hidden agenda so we we are sitting at the same table discussing even even the, the differences so even within family can be differences right, right. Yes. so well and uh, the, the we we should keep talking we should not closing the doors like the west is doing so well they just well imposed all sanctions uh, on, right. on everything right now so well limiting the space for dialogue uh, so well but still we are ready for dialogue even with the west but the point is that the dialogue should be forward-looking, professional, mindful about the national interests and uh, how we manage the balance of interests between us. Right. Agree to disagree. I think that's a very healthy way to go about it. Thank you. Uh, uh, one uh, couple of last questions. Uh, one is, you know, of course, uh, uh, a very uh, precarious situation which India, the Modi government is confronted with right now is to get our, uh, you know, students back safely. There is some confusion about, you know, they're being held hostage uh, by Ukraine. Uh, I don't want to go into controversy too much, uh, but uh, the, really what we are looking at, this is a public interest question. Uh, what is Russia doing to help out India? Concretely, very briefly. Yeah. Well, uh, this is a very serious question, and we are very mindful about this situation. It was, uh, again, the reason why our leaders spoke to each other quite recently uh, on the phone. So there is uh, something which uh, dominates our conversation between the defense ministries and other levels. I'm not just even mentioning the external affairs ministries. We, we are in a constant touch with each other. Russia is ready to do everything possible to ensure the safe evacuation of the Indian nationals from Ukraine, and uh, we have assured our uh, uh, Indian partners about that. Moreover, practical steps have been started in order to uh, proceed towards uh, this goal. Well, and uh, let us be very clear again, so that, uh, um, again, uh, I'm sure that uh, there are a lot of speculations about the uh, killing of the Indian student in, in Kharkiv. So, and uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, join the condolences uh, which were expressed by the Russian officials, uh, including the Russian ambassador, towards uh, the family, towards Indian nation. So this is a very unfortunate incident, very sad moment. And uh, we are very committed to 
uh, conduct the thorough investigations of what happened. There are a lot of uh, 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 versions of uh, why it happened. So, and uh, either it was, you know, cross firing, either it was uh, shelling, etc. So again, let us be very clear that Russia is not targeting civilian infrastructure units, a civilian, civilian building and civilians, not uh, taking hostages. But what we know for sure that uh, the Indian students, a thousand of them and even more, so were there, uh, you know, well, uh, not let by the Ukrainians leave the railway station there. They were staying there for 24 hours, or even more, not letting them go. So, and uh, um, we know their, uh, you know, um, uh, ability and practice to use uh, hostages and people and the human shield, the, the, the terrorist tactics, uh, which is there. So, and uh, um, what is uh, in other areas of concern that, you know, neo Nazis are uh, widespread there in, the, in Ukraine, and uh, actually they are controlling all the troops movements in, in the Ukrainian borders, even controlling the decision making in the army. And what happened quite recently that uh, the Kiev authorities started disseminating weapons for free to everyone in Kyiv. So even they ha have left free prisoners. And uh, there are so uh, the criminal situation in the country is uh, deteriorating tremendously. That is another cause of concern which uh, students may be facing. And, uh, I'm sure that you have seen the reports from the Polish and Ukrainian border when they were facing some humili humiliation on the racist grounds. So uh, it would be very interesting if you were able to to meet those students which are coming there and ask them what they have seen themselves. So uh, we are very concerned about the safety of uh, all the uh, foreign nationals in Ukraine, especially um, Indians, since well, we are speaking <laughs> about India, they're present here, of course, and we are very committed to support India in every possible way. I'm sure some practical steps are already there. Right. Uh... This is my last question, you know, we can go on and on, but we have to stop somewhere. So my last question is, you know, you know, apart from the geopolitics of war, you know, uh, getting into calculations and the rights and the wrongs, there is the humanitarian side of the crisis. Over a million uh, people, we, uh, we are told uh, refugees, uh, European neighboring countries are flooded with more than a million refugees. And uh, it's been tough for civilians. It's been a painful, traumatic experience, not just for Ukrainian suffering out there. I think suddenly what we see is the return of the war in the old fashioned sense of the term. Uh, my question is, uh, you know, people, this is the uppermost, this is the question which is uppermost in people's mind. When will all this mayhem end? Uh, how will it end? Is it is there an end game in mind? You know here. What did you say? I know it's a very difficult question to answer for people. Uh, you know, sitting in the studio. Uh, but is, how do you see this is. end? It is. Yeah. It is difficult question. It is difficult for those who are far behind, far far away from the events which are going on there. So uh, I can be based on uh, the um information which we received from the russian officials who are dealing with the situation and um, um, those who are fighting again so and um, um we are very much hopeful to uh, to that the situation is ended as soon as possible you you are very well aware that uh, the negotiations between the russian and ukrainian delegations have started at the level of the presidential advisors the second round took place quite uh, yesterday, and um, so the uh, more we go ahead with the talks, so uh, more we have uh, better initial understanding of what's going on. Our, at the same time, our goals remain unchanged. Demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine so that the country should become a neutral state, not presenting any threat to Russia and um, the other neighboring countries. This is an end game. But you touched upon a uh, humanitarian situation, which is really a big problem. But you know, I would uh, like to draw your attention to the fact that uh, actually uh, this uh, humanitarian aspect is covered one-sidedly by uh, some particular Western media. So we uh, not paying attention to, to what's happening from the other side. Again, so, and uh, even, even if we take the sanction, uh, you know, um, um, uh, sanctions, for example, because sanctions is a very serious instrument, which is uh, really influencing negatively the humanitarian situations in particular country, especially those uh, one, uh, unilateral sanctions. Have a look how, how much people are suffering because of sanctions in Korea, in Iran, in North Korea, I mean, 
So, and uh, actually, they present the picture just for one side, actually. They are uh, blaming Russia for civilian killings, but it's it's not the case, absolutely. So, well, they, but they don't represent the picture from the other side, again. So, well, they were calm and not so much emotional, which it happened to 100,000 of civilians which were killed under the American strikes in Syria, Libya, Iraq, and other, in other countries, again. So, and uh, this humanitarian aspect is something which uh, should be the top priority for everyone to think before something uh, bad happens. Right. The very last question, which is, what are Russia's expectations from India in the context of the ongoing crisis? As a, as a friend, as a partner, what are Russia's expectations? Well, to some extent, we already touched upon this, uh, you know, aspect. Uh, and uh, once again, let me reiterate that we are uh, highly appreciating the position India is taking uh, with regard to this crisis. Uh, we can see a very deep understanding of uh, what happens in Ukraine and what uh, happened before that, what was the real cause of this crisis, because it happened not just, uh, you know, eight years, uh, eight days ago, it happened eight years ago, in fact, and uh, our Indian partners in the uh, various uh, uh, organizations and agencies uh, do share our uh, um, understanding and understand very well how why we have taken this decision, of course, and uh, we are very grateful for this, uh, you know, uh, for, for this approach. Uh, however, it is uh, not just because uh, uh, well, um, it happens right now. This uh, type of partnership, this type of dialogue, is a uh, very typical of our partnership. We are uh, very open for the dialogue uh, each and every time. We have unprecedented level of mutual understanding. And uh, uh, the position India has taken in the Security Council, in General Assembly, in other you know, platforms, uh, is representing uh, the status of India as a global and responsible uh, power. So, and uh, um, uh, we have no doubts that the position would uh, remain unchanged because it, uh, it is uh, representing the Indian national interests, because actually if we, um, uh, if we you know, give in, so uh, the conditions would become much worse. We should stand what we believe in. We should stand for our values. We should stand for the ideas of true, just and equal multipolarity. This is just the only way how we can uh, maintain the equal dialogue between the states, taking into account interests of all countries. And uh, going forward, keeping in mind that uh, we, we, there should not be any dictate and manipulation of the world. Uh, thank you, Mr. Babushkin, for your you know, uh, excellent articulation of views on a range of subjects. And, okay. and you know, and what, what we are seeing is an information warfare of sorts. So, you know, clarifications and, uh, you know, different sides of the story need to be presented objectively. Uh, uh, so thanks so much. And the interview will also be published, besides being broadcast on a YouTube network, uh, right. will also be published on the portal uh, indiarights.org, India Rights Network, and eventually uh, in the magazine, India and the World Magazine. Thanks again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Take yeah. care. Thanks.